Hello again one and all, it's me Matt, appreciate you stopping by on today's video. Naval firepower once again, and maybe not so much firepower in the specific regard to this ship that we're going to discuss today, more along the lines of aviation firepower, which is just as more important than missiles or guns on destroyers or frigates of today. We are talking once again about aircraft carriers, and this has been a very highly requested video of people on my channel for me to review, so I thought I'd finally get round to the Charles de Gaulle R91 aircraft carrier, an absolutely incredible singular French naval warship. Now the Charles de Gaulle, or otherwise known as R91, is the only nuclear-powered aircraft carrier currently in service with the French Navy. She stands as the first French-produced nuclear-powered surface craft ever, and features a variety of modern high-tech systems that make her a major player on the global stage. Unfortunately though, she is quite old, and being that she is only a singular platform, she is put under a lot of pressure. Recently in Europe, of course, we do now have the Queen Elizabeth carrier class coming from the UK, assisting in the European aircraft carrier fleet, but for some time, she actually was one of the only carriers that could actually patrol European waters and provide European aircraft capability. The flagship of the fleet for almost 20 years, she represents the projection of power for the French across the Mediterranean, Persian Gulf and Indian Ocean, but specifically around the entire globe. Named after Brigadier General, later the head of state Charles de Gaulle, is the symbol of French resistance during the Second World War and the face of the Free French. She was launched in 1994 by the Brest Shipyard and came into service in 2001 when it replaced the previous flagship, the aircraft carrier Foch. The second Clementu class carrier was decommissioned in 2000 after 37 years of service and operational missions carried out during numerous international crises and the Mediterranean region was involved in both Libya, Yugoslavia and the Persian Gulf. The French government in September 1980 approved the acquisition of two nuclear propelled aircraft carriers as a replacement for the two earlier ships. The subsequent shipbuilding plan called for the construction of the first CVN to begin in 1986 for the ship to join the fleet in 1996. The second CVN was to be started in 1991 and completed within 10 years. The keel for the Charles de Gaulle was laid down at the Navy Yard in Brest in April 1989, making France the second nation to initiate the construction of nuclear carriers. The Charles de Gaulle began sea trials in 1999 and major problems were immediately encountered. Severe vibrations were experienced requiring replacement of the ship's two propellers. There were electrical problems that, that determined the angle deck was also too short to land the American E2C Hawkeye aircraft being acquired by France. Those aircraft were ordered after the ship was designed. The angle deck was actually lengthened by 14.5 feet and the ship finally entered service in April 2001. The Charles de Gaulle has a standard displacement of 37,520 tonnes and a full load is around about 40,600 tonnes with an overall length of 857 feet. Currently she is posted at the military naval base at the port of Toulon. She fields a very powerful variant of aircraft known as the Dassault Rafale, known as the designation of the Rafale M, and can also sport a variety of other specialised aircraft and helicopters as needed. The aircraft, like the majority of aircraft carriers of its generation, has a single island on the starboard side of the flight deck. This is obviously the home to the command decks of the ship and the carrier-based aircraft control. This is also where the bulk of the radar and communication systems and other electronic equipment are installed. 
Lower in tonnage than the Nimitz class US aircraft carriers, it is equipped with the same aircraft launch and recovery systems as installed on the bridges of American carriers. The steam catapult system, known as the acronym of CATABAR, or Catapult Assault Assisted Takeoff and But Arrested Recovery, includes two to three shutdown systems, which runs for a length of 75 meters in the flight deck area, which reaches out to a total of 12,000 square meters. The bridge is connected to the hangars and underneath through two starboard side lifts, which is not as effective as some of the more modern day aircraft carriers that are being developed with more side lifts. There is one at the front and one at the back of the control island, allowing the aircraft to be deployed within 15 minutes of coming from the hangar bay to the hangar deck completed and ready to go. The propulsion energy is supplied by a pair of K-15 pressurized water nuclear reactors called Ation and Zena which provide the thrust to the group of turbines that allow the aircraft carrier to reach the very powerful rating of 83,000 horsepower. At speed, this is 5 knots slower than that of the Clemenceau class conventional powered aircraft carriers. According to the engineers who developed the PA2 project under the scope of the French-British cooperation, the hull of CDG is structured in such a way to allow the unit to continue to, quote, fight even after it's been hit by numerous conventional anti-ship torpedoes or missiles. In fact, the design of this aircraft carrier was very much focused around the Exocet missile platform and whether or not Exocet would potentially be launched at it from other nations if the missiles were actually sold to them. It's claimed that the French flagship would actually take 13 direct hits of certain anti-ship missiles before being forced to abandon its operations and withdraw where possible. Now that's quite skeptical because I can say this, if there were certain missiles that were coming in from the Russian anti-ship missile platforms, I don't think 13 are going to take it out. It's probably going to be one, maybe two. Over the course of its history though, the French Navy has possessed eight aircraft carriers, therefore air-sea tactics have been honed in various theatres of operation. The French Navy is definitely not new to the world of aircraft carriers and their effective use of them. In fact, as of recently, they've been using them to extreme effect in Syria and Iraq. It is precisely this experience that seems to have led the Chiefs of Defence staff to place their faith in this type of craft, and recently expressing the need to equip France with a new generation of new air-sea carrier to support the Charles de Gaulle. The overall cost of the ship was quantified at 20 billion francs or 3 billion euros since it was introduced in 2002. To add to this, there are 1.3 billion euros allocated for its latest refit, which began in 2017 and was completed at the very end of 2018. As mentioned before, this aircraft carrier is still heavily involved in conflicts around the world. So much so that the aircraft are constantly being placed on missions and sorties of today and some of the most experienced aircraft pilots of aircraft carriers are on this ship. The Charles de Gaulle has gone through many different trials itself in its development phases, but also during its upgrading phases. New retrofitting packages being placed on it concurrently even to this day. In terms of the aircraft, the Raphael M, the carrier-based variant of the advanced multi-role aircraft developed by Dassault is the successor of the F-8 Crusader and Super Etonade, which is a fighter attack reconnaissance and buddy tanker role aircraft. The single-seat Rafale M and the similar two-seat Rafale N can carry a variety of air-to-surface weapons, including the AMSP nuclear missile. The Rafale Squall is a twin-engine aircraft that features low observability stealth characteristics that include reduced radar and infrared signatures. However, to this day, the Rafale has been very much a prominent aircraft on the flight deck of the Charles de Gaulle. The aircraft has an integrated countermeasure system as well, electro-optical sensors and electronically scanned array radar. A reconnaissance pod can be fitted and some variants will support the buddy refueling system. Of course, there's also the Eye in the Sky Hawkeyes that can be launched off the aircraft carrier, which initially could not be launched without that additional runway added to the flight deck. The Rafale also has the built-in rapid-fire 30mm gun, and a variety of air-to-air -air and air-to-surface missiles can be carried, including the Exocet anti-ship missile, as well as laser-guided bombs. Just like any aircraft carrier, she is only good as the aircraft that are on board, and in fact, she can carry up to 32 of these aircraft. Unfortunately, though, for the Charles de Gaulle and the Rafale M, it's been quite a difficult partnership. The problem is, is the aircraft carrier is very old and the aircraft are actually concurrently being upgraded in the Air Force of the French Armed Forces also. When the upgrade packages are placed onto these aircraft, it's difficult for the aircraft carrier to meet some of the communications, I-star and radar requirements that the aircraft needs. So you're basically placing a high-tech piece of equipment launching from something that is still quite dated. 
This is the problem that the Charles de Gaulle is having, and a requirement to replace the aircraft is very heavy on the French military's needs. The aircraft carrier is not on its own though. It does carry Aster surface-to-air missiles in vertical launchers, and two Sandral point defense missile systems are also fitted. There are eight 20mm guns fitted on the side of the ships, including some variants of the SeaWiz kind of system. The construction of the second nuclear carrier, possibly to be named the Richelieu, was continually delayed, primarily because of fiscal constraints, as always. The decision subsequently made a procurement of the second carrier completely inadequate, and they wanted to produce it with conventional propulsion. The decision was then made to have the same form of collaboration with Britain in the CVF program. It's important to know that the new carrier became operational by 2014 when the Charles de Gaulle was scheduled for a lengthy refueling and overhaul. The carrier is fitted with a SATRAP computerized integrated stabilization system designed to maintain stabilization to within 0.5 degrees of horizontal, allowing aircraft to be operated up to a sea state of 5 to 6. Charles de Gaulle can operate a fleet of up to 40 aircraft at any one time, but primarily 35 fit comfortably on the aircraft when fully laden. As well as the aircraft's two pairs of active stabilizing fins and twin rudders, the system has two computer-controlled compensation units consisting of two rail tracks for trains carrying up to 22 tons of dead weight. These tracks run traversely below the flight deck, and this system is designed to compensate for wind and heel of control, yaw, and surge. The ship's weapons are managed by the Senate Combat Management System, which has a capacity to track up to 2,000 targets. The weapon control system consists of the two VG-105 Optronic Directors supplied by Shagum. The ship also has the Shagum Vipper search and tracking system. The aircraft carrier's armament is really not quite necessary, but it can fire up to a range of around 8km with its 20mm guns if necessary, carrying 720 rounds per gun. There are four Sagam Defense Security Sagam 10-barrel trainable decoy launchers also installed. The system fires chaff to 8km and infrared flares to a range of 3. But, just like anything, good things must come to an end, and they are looking to replace a development aircraft into the spot of the Charles de Gaulle. French President Emmanuel Macron is prepared to authorise development of the country's next generation aircraft carrier. The carrier, known as PANG, will replace Charles de Gaulle as well as serve as a platform for France's future combat aircraft. The aircraft carrier is a very long legacy of 43 tons of French destruction. France wants that new aircraft carrier to be ready to be taken over by 2038, when CGG will be 40 years old. Pang will be a 70,000 ton ship, nearly twice as large as the older carrier by weight. According to certain sources, it's likely to utilize nuclear propulsion once again. And France has territories and interests around the world where a nuclear powered ship could steam to a crisis without stopping to refuel. A nuclear reactor could also allow France to install laser weapons and high other energy weapons on board for the future as part of an initial weapons package upgrade or downgrade in future weapons platforms. One key technology aboard CGD is likely to be USA made. France is reportedly very interested in the electromagnetic aircraft launching system or EMALS in use on the aircraft carrier USS Ford. EMALS has had more than its fair share of problems though, but the French know that the system seems to be working much better now. The carrier might have three email systems to the Ford's four, allowing it to launch up to three aircraft in a short period of time. Certain sources believe that the Pang will typically embark up to 32 next generation fighters, and two E2D Hawkeyes. A joint Spanish-German-French project of the new generation fighter is set to replace the 1980s era Rafale M fighter on the Pang. It's almost certainly be accomplished by the carrier-based drones also capable of reconnaissance, strike or mid-air refueling missions. So, although this aircraft carrier is pretty old and she's coming to the end of her life expectancy, as always of things that I talk about recently, she has served the French Navy and the French nation very, very well. And as I said before, she has a host of experience with both her pilots and crew to be one of the most effective aircraft carriers floating around the world. It's safe to say that she has definitely earned her place in naval history and in naval legacy. Guys, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you did enjoy, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear about what you thought of the video below. If I did get anything wrong, please feel free also to correct me. If you want to support my channel, you're more than welcome to go check out my Patreon account and also my 
you know, certain social media links in the description box below. And for those of you who are um, subscribed and, uh, you know, as a member or on my Patreon, I cannot thank you enough personally. Really does mean a lot to me for you to support my channel financially. Appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Uh, for everyone else who is new to the channel, please make sure you click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any videos coming up in the future. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Catch you on the next one. Au revoir.